Silver Lake Sand Dunes may not be that big, but it is fun. Hello everybody. We are at the Silver Lake Sand Dunes today. Uh, very unexpected trip. Unfortunately, I did not really do a announcement prior to this because it was very last minute, but I'm super stoked that we were able to make it over here today. I want to give a huge shout out before all these Silver Lake videos start to Sam Flix, which is a local media company here that will take photos of you if you guys come to Silver Lake and rip the dunes. So I reached out to them because uh, I'm a fellow creator and I thought it'd be fun to collaborate. So big thanks to Dave and Rick who owns uh, Sam Flicks and Dune Stars. Wheeler's almost ready to go. I am gonna be gearing up and getting out to the dunes here first thing. So no idea how the day's gonna be, but there's tons of sport quads here. So it's gonna be awesome. What's your name? John. John? Yep. Man, it's all Johns and Mikes and, oh, okay, yeah. and then Scott. Right? Yeah, I keep three Johns out there. I think, so. <laughs> I'm gonna just get a little preview of you guys' quads here. Nice 2008 special edition. And the Freedom Raptor, you call it? Yep. This is Scott. Awesome Freedom Raptor here. Oh, it looks, oh, you got Barkers on here. So, oh, you guys both have Barkers. This is gonna be fun, man. All right, this is the second time I filmed driving out because I did not turn on my camera for the first ride out. Okay, here we go. Very cool YXZ. So when you get here, you need your ORV trail pass, your ORV pass, and an ATV sticker for Silver Lake. You also need a parks pass for your vehicle to park in here. You need a whip, a flag, and they sell those here. You can get a variety of colors, and then you also need a spark arrestor in your exhaust, unless you're running your factory exhaust. So you pull up to the gate here, everybody kind of single files in. There's a big entrance road that pops you out. There's only one way in and one way out of the whole place. You pull up here, this bar checks for your flag, make sure it's the right height, and then they check for a spark arrestor. You good? Yep. Okay. So this is the new entrance. I know that, I think the main thing they did is they widened it. Counter's already out here. Frank, who has a really awesome Raptor 700 set up for drag racing, he uh, was, it was really cool for him to bring Connor out in his Razor. There's a lot of activity going on here this weekend. Lots of sport quads. I've seen a ton of machines so far. Vintage quad racers, 250Rs, uh, lots of Raptors, lots of 450s. Really cool stuff so far. Got some big trucks by me. Got to go out and find Connor. Apparently it's just straight ahead. <laughs> Another vehicle that's stuck. I want to say vehicles air down to like 15 pounds or something. Like really low, maybe even lower than that. Wow, man, it is busy out here. Holy cow. Man, the sand is super sugary. It's very dry here right now. I'll be doing a perimeter lap following Scott and John around the park here. It's super important when you come to a place like this, if you're new to it, to be very cautious and to take your time when you're first exploring it.
that big, but it is fun. We got Scott in front of me on the Freedom Raptor. He's taking me on a little perimeter tour right now. Check the place out, see what's different from last year. It's definitely changed its shape a little bit. Oh, cool. This is different from last year. the left perimeter. You can see Silver Lake way over there. Alright, now we're heading towards the lake. We pretty much ran the north to south side of the park. This park is also directional. Those big hills we went over, it's only one way. You'll get in big trouble if you go the other way. It's super dangerous. So now we're heading towards the scramble area. Uh, the scramble area is super fun when it's not that busy, but when it's busy, you gotta really have your head on a swivel. There's another one of my followers here on his CRF 450 right there, brand new bike. sunglasses I'll be back on I'll go back to the Raptor rally area um it's Carson right yeah, yeah I was gonna say I saw your name on there it's pretty cool man nice to meet you 
I gotta go get my sunglasses and then I'll be back out. We'll just keep an eye out for you, okay man? Sure. Alright. hot out there. I'm gonna get stuck. There. My spark arrestor blew out. Yeah. So it, I think it's, it's in there now. I went and bought a much nicer one. I'm not sure if that takes the same one as the Barker's do or not. I got extra for Barker's. I had an HMF arrestor in there with a washer to compress it and the screen actually blew off the ring. I was riding it and I was like, I think this thing got louder all of a sudden. This seems to power cut at high RPM for some reason. It started doing it about a ride or two ago. Okay. So it almost seemed electrical at first. I'm going to kind of dog it around a bit when we ride and just be careful for now. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. We'll see. I try to turn it over right now the starting sounds kind of weak at the moment unfortunately so it was running really good and I came over the last hill and I was in like fourth gear and gave a gas and it power cut real bad and then I downshifted brought the R's back up was following you guys and kind of stayed off the gas and then as soon as I laid into it again it shut off so I thought it maybe got hot, but now I let the fan run and I've let it sit. But now if I try to start her, it's, it's I'm not sure. Okay. It looks like he's not getting spark. Oh really? Yeah, it was good. Sounds tight. The motor? Well, it's either sounds like a hot motor that's tightening up or a battery that's just a little on the weak side. Just a little. Well, we can do whatever you want, Pete. I mean, we can drag it back to the parking lot, let it sit for a little while, and come back to it. When I left, because I had to go get a spark arrestor, I went back out. It power cut once, and I was like, oh, that was weird. I went to go get a spark arrestor and get my sunglasses, came out, turned it on, ran fine. Rode it to the tent, ran fine. We did the first couple of hills. I was like, oh, it's running just fine. That was weird. And then right here was when it did it again, and it shut off. That's why I didn't want to turn it back on when it did that. Right. So that's why I'm saying I think we should let it cool down, leave it for a half hour to an hour until it comes down to temperature. If we can get it to turn, we know it's not locked up, we know it's you know it'll fire. It's interesting that it ran so fine until like the third hill. So it was hot. Yeah, that's really good at hot. If we After a little... it gets hot, the being lean is it magnifies the detonation. Okay, 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 that makes sense. They, they go hand in hand. If you're lean, you're gonna get hot. And if you're hot, then you're going to feel leaner sooner. What if we ran a little 110 in? I guess you bring a sight in. Yeah, it smells kind of punk. Does it? Yeah. It's been sitting for a month. So you think that's bad? Yeah. Okay. We know this. Pump yep. gas sucks. That's why I we, run 110. He's bought bad stuff right out of the tank, right, right out of the, the ground. Really? But I didn't think about bad gas. Mine ran bad the gas. exact same way. Yeah. I didn't think about I bad gas at all. The whole day. 
So if you turn lean for the sand, we throw race gas in, it's a solved problem. Okay. What do, I don't know if I call this video like sand dune breakdown. What do I call it? <laughs> Frank saves the day. That's what I call it. Frank saves the day. We'll try the fuel. Yeah. It, it still acts up. I would recommend just shutting it down and not running it. The rest of the weekend. It'll just cost you money, but you know what? We got other Raptors here. We got my Razor. You guys are welcome to it. Dude, I mean, if we can tote around in that, I just want to film everybody. That's yeah, all I care about. It'll be fine. Yeah. So. It's so cool to see a bit of everything, you know, like, I felt like when I came here last year, I was just looking for quads and you know, I saw, you know, the handful, but it was always kind of the same guys. And man, I'm just seeing like every kind of quad. There's so many great sport quads here today. So many epic builds. They're all over the place. Here I am getting towed, but whatever, man. I'm not gonna let it get me down. Could be worse, could have got hurt. Thing could have grenaded. There could be oil everywhere. I mean, it can always be worse. And this is part of the sport, so. I just wish I would have been a little more prepared for this trip. I also couldn't say thanks enough times to Frank here. Frank has been practically the reason why this trip has even happened for me. I mean, he was the first one to really reach out and be like, dude, you gotta come. And uh, I mean, look at what he's doing for me now. And he's towed Connor around, he even let Connor drive his Razor. I mean, what a selfless, awesome human. Regardless if you're on a sport quad or not, we're all in this together and it's a bunch of like-minded people. Fifty R is so sick. Oh my god! So we're gonna put the Raptor in Frank's trailer. Let it sit. We're gonna drain all the gas out and put race gas in it. And hopefully, race gas fixes everything. We'll see. to Razor Red. Let the Raptor cool down a little bit more. Unfortunately, it didn't sound the best when we started it, so we're gonna let it sit and we will diagnose more later and see how it is. It doesn't look too good though, unfortunately. Thankfully, there's a lot of other stuff to do here. Normal weekend at Silver Lake, that's crazy. But this is normal. That is so many quads. <laughs> 